Hi guys, um, today we are going to be solving absolute value equations and in a later video we are going to be solving absolute value inequality. So let's do this. So fun problem number one reads, find the absolute value of each number. So absolute value of 8 is 8, absolute value of negative 8 is 8, okay? So like I remember from back in the day we were just like, oh, if you if you take the absolute value of a number just make sure your answer is positive and and that's it and that's how I did it from rote memory but the question is why is it positive I should be more specific why is it not negative well that's because the definition of absolute value so the absolute value of some number let's just say a what is that it's the distance so distance distance from the number a to zero on the number line since distance is not negative, this is why we're never going to have a negative result. Absolute value of 12, it's 12. Why? Because 12 is 12 units away from 0 on the number line. On that note, absolute value of negative 12 is also 12 because negative 12 is uh, 12 units away from 0 on the number line. So the moral of this story is, is that the absolute value of any non-zero number is always positive. Okay, It's never going to be negative. Phone problem number two, I'm not going to lie. So uh, the directions read, find the values of x that will make the equation a true statement. If no solution, so state. Under normal circumstances, I would just say solve and be, and then you guys can be in your merry way. <coughs> but the problem is that we haven't talked about how to solve uh, absolute value equations. So this is why I made the directions a little bit longer. So pretty much we are going to solve these by inspection, like just by thinking, okay? So we have absolute value of x equals 8. So I'm like, ah, well, absolute value of what equals 8? What number or what numbers are 8 units away from 0 on the number line, okay? So in this case, our uh, one solution is 8. Absolute value of 8 is 8. And then another solution is negative 8. Fantastic. Cool. All right, second equation, uh, absolute value of x equals negative 12. So we want to know what are the values of x that will make the equation a true statement, okay? Or like in short, solve, okay? So then I'm thinking, ah, absolute value of what is negative 12? So I'm like, what number or what numbers are negative 12 units away from zero on the number line? But we have to remember, distance is not negative, so the absolute value can never equal will never evaluate to some negative number. So in this case, there is no solution. Now, are these two problems are gonna are these two problems gonna be on the test? Of course not. Okay, we're gonna make them a little bit spicier. Okay, but I'm gonna just expand on problem A. Now. When we get to the actual uh, explanation of the technique, this is how it's going to go down. If we are not able to answer by inspection, well, I would need to see your algebra anyways. So we have absolute value of what equals 8. Okay, so what number is 8 units away from 0 on the number line? And this is how I do it. We're going to say that either the inside equals 8 or that distance or its opposite equals 8 okay or that distance okay first equation we already have x equals 8 there's nothing to solve for I mean I'm going to say we already have the variable isolated so there's nothing to solve for so we have that either the inside equals 8 or its opposite equals 8 okay what do I mean by opposite so we have that inside x and then we want the opposite so we just slap a negative in front and then we go ahead solve the corresponding equation. To undo the times negative 1, let's go ahead divide both sides by negative 1 and we're good. Bear in mind since or means union, let's go ahead take the union of our answers. Okay, so let's go ahead combine our results. So we have x equals 8 comma negative 8. Okay, if you choose to write your answer in set notation because you're an overachiever or because your book says so, that's fine. I don't really stress it uh, for linear equations, so so we're good. Okay, so now uh, let's go ahead do some of spicier problems. Fantastic. So let me get this paper out of the way. Okay, so what are the steps to solve an absolute value equation? So the first things first, which is the most important thing, uh, one, you have to isolate the absolute value. S uh, some students uh, 
tend to overlook tend to overlook that step and go straight to the compound equation so please be careful so step number one isolate the absolute value and then two solve the corresponding compound equation so let's just say that this is our problem absolute value of ax plus b equals c and a disclaimer where c is a positive real number and that's because the absolute value no matter what you plug in it's never going to simplify to a negative number remind me not to use yellow anymore for the highlighter okay so the question is how do we solve that absolute value equation now me and most books disagree they they say something like oh yeah solve ax plus b equals c or ax plus b equals negative c which is totally correct okay it is correct uh but when i was a student um, i used to get in trouble sometimes because i couldn't write this but i wouldn't uh, apply it correctly so my recommendation is this we're gonna take it using the same strategy that we did this problem how do we solve this absolute value equation? So absolute value measures distance from the number to zero on the number line. So if the distance should be eight, what number or numbers should be eight units away from zero? Well, it's either gonna be itself or it's opposite. And that's how we're gonna handle it. We're gonna say the inside equals eight or it's opposite equals eight. And if you do it like that, I kid you not, the next section is gonna be a piece of cake, okay? so. To solve the absolute value equation, one, make sure the absolute value is isolated, and then two, solve the corresponding compound equation. So we're going to say that the inside, I don't have space, so we're going to say that the inside equals C, and it's always or, or it's opposite equals C. It's because it's either this expression is C units away from zero on the number line, or it's opposite, so, so let's go ahead and put an open parenthesis, or it's opposite is C units, away, um, C units away from zero on the number line. Okay, so we have a little shortcut thing, but I, I'd rather address it when the time comes, so bear with me, okay? So uh, we have three problems, let's go ahead and knock them out one at a time. So we have absolute value of 2x plus 5 plus 8 equals 12. First things first, we have to be able to identify what kind of equation is. You know, depending on the equation, that's the strategy that you're going to use to solve it. So we have an equation. There's an absolute value involved, variable inside it. So guess what? Absolute value equation. So now it's like, how are we going to solve it? Our first goal is to isolate the absolute value. If you're not with the, yeah, I'm not going to, I can't use highlighters today, sorry. If you're not with the absolute value, you got to go. So to undo the addition, let's go ahead, subtract. Let's go ahead, subtract 8 from both sides. And that will give us absolute value of 2x plus 5 equals 4. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to address the shortcut now because I, <laughs> I can display it. Now, sometimes you can take a shortcut when is it that you can take a shortcut you can take a shortcut if the absolute value uh, isolated one okay if the absolute value is set equal to a negative number and the reason being is because no matter what value of x you plug in the absolute value is never gonna uh, evaluate to some negative number i think that's our problem from above okay it doesn't matter what value of x you plug in, um, it's never going to evaluate to some negative number, so there's no solution. So as you saw, as you are solving these absolute value equations, if you have absolute value equal negative number, you have some options. You can stop there and say, nope, it's not happening, so there's no solution. Or, or two, you can uh, show your solution algebraically and then check your response and then you'll see you have no solution. Okay. So coming to A, uh, solving an absolute value equation. So one, ask, isolate the absolute value. Cool. Two, solve the corresponding uh, compound equation. But before we move forward or before we split it, I want to ask myself, can I take a shortcut? I don't know. Is the absolute value set equal to a negative number? Unfortunately, it's not. So that means this is happening. So to solve it, it's either this expression is four units uh, from zero on the number line or it's opposite sometimes I, I write the word opposite 
and sometimes I get tired and I just put the negative okay so that's it we nailed it I, I feel like uh, if we are able to successfully set up this corresponding uh, compound equation nothing is stopping us we passed pre we passed pre-algebra so we got this and a calculator too so for the first equation to undo an addition let's go ahead subtract and that will give us 2x equals negative 1 to uh, keep it going to get rid of the times 2 let's go ahead divide both sides by 2 and that will give us x equals negative 1 half fantastic for the second equation, let's go ahead and uh, take the opposite. Opposite of a positive term is a negative term. Opposite of a positive term is a negative term. Handle it. Do what you got to do. To undo an addition, let's go, I mean, to undo a subtraction, let's go ahead and add 5 to both sides. And remember, guys, pause and rewind as many times as you need to. Okay, so we have negative 2x equals 9. For the grand finale, to get rid of the time negative 2, let's go ahead and divide both sides by negative 2, and that will give us x equals negative 9 halves. One of the questions that I get is this, can I reduce it? Yeah, I mean, always reduce, um, but it's already reduced. I mean, if you want to write it as a decimal, go for it, but I'll leave it as such. Bear in mind that or means union, so when you submit your answer, I need a combined statement. So let's go ahead and uh, combine our answers. So one solution is a uh, negative one half, and another solution is negative nine halves. For my course, you are not required to write them in order from smallest to largest unless the directions say so. But if you're an overachiever, put them in order. I don't really care. Okay, so we're going to do a total of three problems. That's problem A. Let's go ahead and knock out problem B. Okay, so problem B, we have absolute value of x plus 5. When we increase it by 10, that should give us 7. So it's like, okay, what kind of equation is this? Oh, I got an equal sign. I mean, yeah, we have an equation. We got an absolute value, variable, variable in it, absolute value equation. So I'm like, okay, well, how are we going to solve it? So to solve it, our first goal is to isolate that absolute value. So if you're not with the absolute value, adios, you got to go. <coughs> to undo an addition, let's go ahead and subtract 10 from both sides. And that will give us absolute value of x plus 5 equals negative 3. Okay. So this problem we're going to do twice. The first time around is the keep your cool way. And the second time around, we'll do it algebraically. So we have said earlier that sometimes we can take a shortcut. When can you take a shortcut? You could take a shortcut when the absolute value is being compared to a negative number. Okay? And in this case, uh, what do we have? We have an absolute value is being compared to a negative number. So in English, it doesn't matter what value is plug in for x. The absolute value is never going to simplify to a negative number. Okay? So since this cannot happen, then there's no solution. Am I gonna um, am I gonna make you write a speech? No, because this is a special case scenario. You know, if you want to justify it, you can just write down what I say, or you can just say like for all real numbers, whatever. But I'm okay. Now I am a nervous student, so sometimes like. I don't see this because I'm, I'm very uh, mechanical. I'm just so used to procedure, procedure, procedure. So let's go ahead and do it again and we'll solve it algebraically. Okay. So we're going to call this B2 because we want to highlight that it's the same problem done again. I don't want to call it C because I don't want to like think that I did it again by mistake. Okay. Cool. So uh, we already got the the kinks out of the way we already said it's an absolute value equation and the first step to solve it is to uh isolate the absolute value so again if you're not with the absolute value bye you gotta go to undo addition by 10 let's subtract 10 from both sides and that will give us absolute value of x plus 5 equals negative 3. so again we're not gonna go straight to answer right now because then that will defeat the purpose of us doing this again we're just gonna do it algebraically so we have absolute value of x plus 5 equals negative 3. Okay, for those of the, for those students that like to uh, set up the corresponding equation like the book does, it's fine. Again, the book is correct. Okay, the time that I messed up as a student was when um, 
that number is negative okay so, uh, sometimes I wouldn't apply it correctly and my students don't but if you take this approach inside equals number or opposite equals number you will never make that careless mistake I promise okay so let's do this so absolute value of x plus 5 equals negative 3 so this expression is e this expression is negative 3 units away from 0 on the number line which doesn't make sense okay but that's how I say it in fewer words um, the, either the inside equals negative 3 or its opposite equals negative 3 just say it like that for this section this part of this video and the next one and you're gonna be good so either the inside equals negative 3 or its opposite Okay. Remember to put a uh, parentheses around the expression because if you don't, then you're only taking the opposite of the first term and not the entire expression. So please be careful. So first equation, we subtract 5 from both sides and that will give us x equals negative 8. Second equation, let's go ahead and distribute the negative. So that will give us uh, negative x minus 5 equals negative 3. Fantastic, we got this. To isolate the variable term, opposite of subtraction is addition, and that will leave us with negative x equals 2 if my eyes don't fail me. For the final stretch, to get rid of the times negative 1, let's go ahead and divide both sides by negative 1, and that will give us x equals negative 2. So our solutions, because remember, or means union, okay? So when we combine our solutions, we have that the solutions are negative 8 and negative 2. But sometimes I'm a little bit nervous. Like I know my algebra is correct, but I'm in the habit of checking my answer. So let's go ahead and check it, okay? Uh, let's see okay so I'm gonna put CK for check I'm gonna check the first solution so X equals negative 8 I know you guys are awesome and you can plug it in right away but I have a tendency to put the numbers in the wrong place so I'm gonna write the equation first so we have absolute value of X plus 5 plus 10 equals 7 okay this is our answer, so it needs to check out, and if it doesn't, I'm going to start crying right now. Cool. So we have absolute value of x, which we said is negative 8, plus 5. When we add 10 to it, that needs to give us 7. The sum of negative 8 and 5, sorry. The sum of negative 8 and 5 is negative 3. Absolute value of negative 3, you said it is 3. And last time I checked, 3 plus 10 is not 7. If you want to finish it off, go for it. So I'm having a moment because I know that my algebra is correct, okay? So when it doesn't check out, I'm like, what happened? Um, it's not that we made some. It's not that we made a mistake, but negative 8 is actually an, an extraneous solution. So like, um, what that means is is that negative 8 is a solution of one of like one of the new equations, but not of the original equations. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go ahead and cross this out because I don't want to submit it for credit. Now, just because negative 8 didn't check out, it doesn't mean that it does not mean that negative 2 also can check out or that it has to check out. Let's just check it. So our second proposed solution is uh, negative 2. Let's see if it checks out. So the original equation was absolute value of x plus 5. When you add 10 to it, uh, that should equal 7. Okay, so we have, oh, this is in my way, sorry. Okay, so we have absolute value of x, which we say is negative 2 plus 5. Let's go ahead and increase 10, and that needs to give us 7 for my own peace of mind. The sum of negative 2 and 5 is 3. The absolute value of 3 is 3, and unfortunately, the sum of 3 and 10 is uh, not 7. Sorry, I was trying to speak as I as I wrote. Okay, so we had already established that uh, negative eight is not a solution; it's an extraneous solution. Negative two didn't didn't check out, and I know that our algebra is correct, so it's an extraneous solution. It's not that we bombed it. So what happened? Uh, we had. I don't want to show my fingers anymore because I haven't had a manic in a while. Uh, actually, I don't pay for them. Yeah, as you can tell. 
Haku. So what's going on? We had two possible answers. The first one didn't check out. The second one didn't check out. Since neither one could fly and we have nothing else to go by, then this bad boy has no solution. Now, is that answer a shock? It, it shouldn't be, okay? Why not? It shouldn't be because we had already done this problem, okay? But we just wanted to answer it algebraically. So on a quiz or test, it's really up to you, okay? Um, of course, I want your work, but for, for these kinds of problems, you know, um, it's okay if you don't show as much work depending on how you knocked it out. If you just leave this as your final uh, line of work and go straight to answer for this problem, I'm good. If you do it algebraically, it's fine too, but just check your answer. Okay, guys, so we're going to do a, a total of three problems. Let's go ahead do our third and final problem, and then we're out. Okay, so problem C, let me copy it from the notes. Problem C, we have a negative 3 times the absolute value of 7 minus x plus 5 equals negative 13. Now this problem oh, is a little tricky and I'm going to tell you why. Because at a first glance, I'm really excited and I'm like, oh look, absolute value equation, it equals a negative. Shortcut, no solution. Okay, so that no solution was a, a premature response. Why? Because we can only make that decision or make that call if the absolute value is isolated and it's set equal to a negative number. Left side does equal negative number, but we don't have the absolute value isolated, so no shortcut. Let's isolate it and then see if we could take a shortcut. So if you're not with the absolute value, you got to go. So to undo the addition by 5, let's go ahead and subtract 5 from both sides. And that will leave you with negative 3 times the absolute value of 7 minus x equals negative 18. I, I forget. Cool. Now to finish it off, to isolate the absolute value, to give it the times negative 3, let's go ahead and divide both sides by negative 3. And that will leave you with absolute value of 7 minus x is equal to 6. So now the question is, can we take a shortcut? I don't know. Is the absolute value set equal to a negative number? No, it is not. So we got to show uh, the work. So we let's go ahead and set up the corresponding uh, compound equation. So we're either going to say that the inside should equal 6 because either this expression should be 6 units away from 0 on the number line. Either the inside equals 6 or its opposite should equal 6. All right, so let's do this. We set up the corresponding equation. We're good with algebra. We are on track to get full credit, so let's knock it out. For the first equation, uh, let's isolate the variable term to undo the addition by 7. Let's subtract 7 from both sides, and that will leave us with negative x equals negative 1. To get rid of the times negative 1, let's go ahead and divide both sides by negative 1, and that will give us x equals 1. I checked that at my house second equation. Let's clear those grouping symbols. Let's distribute the negative. Okay, so opposite of 7 will give us negative 7. Opposite of subtracting x it will, uh, opposite of subtracting x is um, adding x and that should equal 6. Take your time. Keep your cool. Watch those negatives. We got this. To isolate the variable term to undo the uh, negative 7, let's go ahead and add it to both sides. And that will give us x equals 13. Bear in mind that or means union. Okay, so we have to take the union of our results. So let's go ahead and combine them. So we are solving for x. One solution is 1. Another solution is 13. So the solutions are 1 and 13. Okay, guys, that's my time. And in the next video, we are going to take it to the next level. We are still going to be uh, solving things involving an absolute value. But we're going to make it spicier. We're going to uh, replace the equal sign with the inequality symbol. Thanks.